Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So if you are new here, my name is Brittany Lesser. I do health and fitness videos and content, but also a lot of mommy vlogs and mommy and baby content as well. So if you did click on this video, then you guys know this is my long awaited breast explant story video. So a lot of you guys actually followed me from the get go because I posted my breast augmentation journey on YouTube. And a lot of people initially found my YouTube channel from that series because I basically went in, in depth of my recovery, like everything about getting a breast augmentation and getting boob job. For almost four years later, it would, it would have been four years in January 2019, I am now boobless and I do not have my breast implants anymore and I'm back to my natural self. And I'm gonna tell you guys the story about that, why I did it, uh, the details. Uh, I'm gonna try to go as in depth as possible. I kept mentioning that I would explain exactly why I got my breast implants removed because there's a lot of talk about breast implant illness and things like that. And in the past, I wasn't so sure about breast implant illness, which I'm sure a lot of people have been through the same, the same thing, whoever has explanted. Um, but now, I want to just share my story. Now that it's been almost one month post-op, I got my my breast explant surgery on November 5th. And yeah, I'm just gonna go through and tell you guys really just my whole story. So sit back, relax, get some tea or something, coffee, chocolate, snacks, whatever. So backing up, I've wanted boobs my entire life. I have always been made fun of having small boobs. I have always felt self-conscious about it because I was, I remember in seventh grade, all of my friends were getting bras and I'd had nothing except for nipples, literally like nothing at all. And so I made my mom get me padded bras and I would have boys making fun of me that I had a flat chest in seventh grade. Like, fuck off, bro. Like, <laughs> this is me, right? So anyway, of course, I've been always been self-conscious about it. And then I, you know, seeing my friends, they just hit puberty and they got breasts and I once I hit puberty I still didn't really get boobs and you know not everyone gets boobs everyone has a different body type and I didn't care I I knew I wanted to get boobs someday and so I made like I'm the type of person that if I want something I will get it no matter what it takes no matter how long it takes when it happens whatever it is I will make sure that I get that so I you know I went through high school and in my high school it was a big thing for parents to get their daughters uh, breast augmentation for their graduation gift. And so everyone was doing it. And I was like, I kept asking my parents, I can you like can you please get me a boob job for my graduation presents? And my mom didn't want me to get them. Like she's has never had fake boobs. She's like, do you really want that? She actually sent me the breast implant illness website and all about it. She's like, look at this, like look at it ruptured. Like she showed me everything and I was like, I don't care. I will die as long as I have boobs. Like I didn't care about anything. And so once I turned 22, I was, you know, I started my business. I was making pretty good money. I was still in college. I was still living at home. And I decided I was gonna get boobs and I was gonna put it on a credit card, care credit, and I was gonna pay it off. And that's exactly what I did. I, I got my boobs, I got, uh, silicone boobs. I found the exact doctor that I wanted. He was absolutely incredible. My boobs looked very natural for a very long time. Um, and they looked great. Um, my recovery wasn't that bad. My surgery wasn't that bad. So my, my breast implants, I got silicone, first of all. Um, and then I got 339cc on the left and then 400cc on the right because this one's bigger. And I also have an indented rib cage. So this rib cage is, uh, this side of my rib cage is back a little bit, and then this side is up a little bit. I also have scoliosis, so this one was a moderate profile, this one was a high profile. So two completely different implants, but, and two completely different sizes, but they looked very proportionate, very natural, everything like that. So I loved my boobs. Like the whole time I had them, I loved them. I was so confident with them. I, I just loved having boobs. I felt so womanly, and I just felt, I just felt everything different, like sexier and uh, just more confident. And, you know, not saying that like plastic surgery will do all of those things because I had to, you know, I still had body image issues. I still like, not everyone loves himself at all times, but I just, I loved my boobs. I loved my boobs. I loved having boobs. I loved how they looked in bras and in um, clothes, everything like that. So fast forward to recently, 
I had my baby nine months ago. I had been through a lot of health issues actually before I even got my implants. I had my gallbladder removed, I would struggle with IBS, I was tired all the time, I had vitamin D, or no, that was actually after the implants. But anyway, so you know, I, I had some health issues beforehand and any other symptoms, I remember continuously going to the doctor, I always thought I had hypothyroidism because I was always tired. This was after the implants. This fast forward to the implants. So after the implants, I was always tired. I um, found out I had vitamin D deficiency. Even once I got that taken care of, I kept getting like running tests to see like, I was like, you need to check my thyroid, you need to check adrenal fatigue, like all these different things. And they all just always came back normal. But I was just like, you know, whatever, like that happens. Like I feel like everyone does this, everyone goes through this, everyone's tired all the time. And it wasn't until I had my baby that I started knowing a lot more symptoms. But a lot of these symptoms of breast implant illness are so vague. They're so, so vague and it could be literally anything. Like there is such a long list of symptoms. I was like, this could be anything. And I had a few people send it to me when I was talking about some of the symptoms. They're like, oh, check this out, check this out. And I'm like, dude, like all of the symptoms are so vague. And I, you know, the more I saw it, like I saw some other people get their implants removed, like Emily Duncan and my friend Sarah, who's the fitness lioness on Instagram. And I started doing more research. And so I, I did notice why I started doing my research was because I was dealing with a lot of issues, but I was also a new mom. Like, obviously I'm going to be exhausted. Obviously like all of these things are happening to your body after you have a baby that it's hard to tell if it's, you know, just postpartum related or if it's something more. <clears throat> so I noticed these symptoms, but I, I just kind of brushed it off. I was like, I'm, I'm a new mom, whatever. So anyway, the, the more I found out about breast implant illness, the more I did my research, I decided to join the Facebook group. And I was like, you know what? I'll just see these other people's stories, like just read more. And I was like, holy shit. Like I still didn't think that I had breast implant illness. I still, I like, now, I still will not say I had breast implant illness because I have no idea. Like, do I think some of the symptoms are resolved? Yes. Am I really happy that I got moves removed? The answer is yes. I'll explain the reasoning why I decided to do that because obviously it's a huge decision. It's a big cost. It's a major surgery. And so yeah, I'll tell you guys my thought process. So first thing I did was I did more research about just breast implants and you know, I knew they were made up of a shit ton of chemicals and heavy metals and toxins, but like I said, when I was 22, I didn't give a shit what was in my body. I just wanted to have boobs. That's all I cared about is how I looked and that I wanted to have boobs. And so now that I'm thinking about it, now I'm a mom, now I'm like, dude, my health is the most important thing in the world. Why would I want to risk it by just having boobs? You know what I mean? Like. Is there any research that breast implants can call, cause certain illnesses? No, like there, there's not, like now more is coming out, but is there solid research that's like, yes, blah, 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 blah. Um, except for the textured implants that I know can cause some sort of breast cancer. But uh, no, you know, a lot of people have breast implants and they're totally fine. But I was like, you know, I really don't think I want to have something foreign in my body that is made up of of heavy metals i'll put all the ingredients here uh you know i i care about what i put into my body and what i put on my body in regards of skincare i only use natural products uh, regards of food i like to eat natural foods most of the time of course i eat you know processed foods and things like that but i try my best to be as holistic and as natural as possible and having something in my chest that's like the farthest thing from that is just kind of hypocritical and not saying that not saying that that's bad and that's hypocritical but for me personally that's kind of how it feels so anyway aside from that that's not the only reason and then I thought about it I was like okay the thought of having another surgery I was like I really don't want to have another major surgery I react horribly to anesthesia every I've had my gallbladder removed and I've had my breast implants and every single time was like the worst reaction to anesthesia and I'm like I'm gonna have to get my boobs redone more times in the future, not just once, but more times. Do I really want to continue to get them redone, spend the money, go through the pain, go through the recovering? Like the recovery is the worst part because like you just wanna work out and like be normal, but you can't. 
you know, all of these things just to have boobs, you know what I mean? And so I'm like, honestly, no. Like, who knows in the future if I'm just gonna have six thousand plus dollars lying around to get new boobs, you know? Or taking time off from my children or my job or whatever it is to recover from the surgery and to get the surgery. It's just like, I really don't wanna do that. Like, screw that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, when I was 22, I was like, I'll get surgeries the rest of my life. I'll pay as much money. Like, like I was balling back then. Like, no, <laughs> like I'm not balling now. I wasn't balling back then, but I did pay it off, which was, I was very proud of myself, obviously. Regardless, the more I thought about it, I was like, okay, for an object to my body the rest of my life, that may not be the healthiest choice in the world. Not, don't really want it. Do I want to continue to get major surgeries and spend the money and spend the time recovering? Mm, no, not really. So those two things uh, were the probably the biggest things that led me to make this decision to remove my boobs. So the more I saw people getting their boobs removed, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna write down some symptoms that I have and I will see. Like, I'm not even saying that these symptoms are related to the breast implants, but any type of symptom that I have, I didn't even look at the breast implant illness symptom list. I just wrote down what I was dealing with or what I had been dealing with for whenever. And then once I got my boobs removed, I pretty much made the decision regardless. But um, once I got my boobs removed, then I would figure out if it was the breast implants or not. And my thought process was, okay, it's a gamble. Do I know that these breast implants are causing these symptoms. No, no one does. It's like, do you take the chance? Like, and this is what I kept going through. Do I take the chance to remove my boobs, possibly be really unhappy with my body and unhappy with my boobs? Not in the sense that I would be unhappy that they're small. Like, yes, do I miss like, you know, the look of having boobs sometimes? Yeah, do I miss how they looked in like sports bras or in certain tops? Yeah, I think they looked wonderful. But at the same time, like, I don't know, I feel like this feels like more me now that I'm in it, but my thought process before the surgery was, uh, you know, those two things, if I got them removed, would I possibly be unhappy with my body, possibly regret it, uh, you know, certain things like that. And yes, those are all possibilities. I was mostly nervous of them being concave or, you know, looking deformed because I didn't want to get a lift because I want more babies. My thought process was, if the symptoms go away or some of them go away, great. If they don't, at least I won't have to worry that a for these foreign objects made up of whatever shit in them would possibly do me harm at some point, possibly rupture, possibly do harm in the future. And I wouldn't have to worry about getting more surgeries in the future. I wouldn't have to worry about spending all that money in the future. So to me, it was like a win-win. Like either the symptoms go away and I don't have to worry about all of this shit that I just said. But if the symptoms don't go away, at least I know that I'm doing the most that I can to be my healthiest self. So that was my thought process. I will list um, my symptoms on the screen. I'll put it right here. But the main, okay, the main thing after I got boobs, I had a lot of shortness of breath and I couldn't take a full deep breath. So I have anxiety right now. I couldn't take a full deep breath because <laughs> I've been dealing with a lot of anxiety recently, but it like stopped almost. That makes sense. And that was one of the first things that I noticed after I got out of the surgery. I was like, holy shit, I've never breathed so well in my life. I was also having a lot of pain in my breasts, burning and sharp pain. And it was really weird. Like it was to the point where it was like, I was just over it. Like, and it didn't even happen that long, but I, I just, it, it hurt. Like it was just not a fun time, obviously. I just overall didn't feel well all the time. I was not recovering from my training well at all. I had a lot of joint pain, like in my knees, my wrists, my ankles. Like I almost felt like swollen almost. Um, I had brain fog, I was forgetful. I would be tripping on my words, fatigue and needing naps often, sensitivity to hot and cold, extreme itchiness and bumps all over legs, sometimes turning into welts. So thirsty despite drinking 200 ounces and uh yeah so those were like the main things but you know again i wasn't sure are these mom related are these anything else related or are they related to my implants so as of today like a month post-op the one the main things that i've noticed are the shortness of breath gone the pain in breasts gone 
so I was also dealing with like back pain like I still get back pain I feel like because I like pick up my baby and everything but it's not as bad but I also haven't been training as well so I'm gonna leave that one out because it's hard to tell I was oh I also got a lot of flu symptoms like whenever I would travel and I would be like in bed from time to time where I couldn't move. That hasn't happened at all. My joint pain is gone. Like I don't have any joint pain at all. Like it was to the point where like I would bend down and my knees hurt. Like that has never happened to me before, you know? I feel like my mind is clearer. I felt like I had a lot of energy. I felt like I had a lot of energy after the surgery. Like when I was off my pain meds, I was like, holy cow. Like I can't believe how much energy I have. And I, I like, yes, I'm still tired. Like. Obviously, if I don't get enough sleep at night, I'm gonna be tired. Like, I'm not saying like this is a cure-all, but I do feel like I have more energy than I did have before. Like, it was to the point where like, I would wake up, I was tired, I would drink coffee, I was tired, I would take a nap, I was tired. And I took naps like, if, almost like every single day leading up to the surgery, because I don't know why, it was like, it was to the point where like, I needed a nap or I wouldn't be able to function. And I am the type of person that cannot take naps normally. The extreme itchiness went away, which was crazy. Like, it was so crazy. Like, the itchiness, like, that has never happened before. And I thought it was my epidural, but nine months later, I don't think so. My doctor said, like, no, like, nine months later, it should not still be affecting you. But that's gone. Like, gone. It was to the point where I was literally scratching my leg off at night. Um, and then what I did notice, too, is, like, my eyes are definitely whiter and brighter. I lost five pounds immediately after the surgery and I'm down another five pounds and I'm 140 pounds right now. I haven't been 140 pounds since before my breast implant surgery. I used to easily maintain like anywhere from 130 to 145 and then after my breast implants like my maintenance was typically like 145 to 155 and before the surgery I was like 148 to 150. That was my pre-pregnancy weight. I was on my pre-pregnancy weight but now I'm like literally like 10 pounds down. Some of it probably inflammation, but I just feel like my body, like I haven't changed anything. I really haven't, like I haven't been working out and I've been eating, like I'm probably, like my appetite's been a little bit low lately, but not to the point where I would lose 10 pounds in like three weeks, you know what I mean? Or four weeks, like, and don't do that. That's not, that's not what I, I would want anyone to do, but that's just what has happened. I haven't tried to lose weight at all. Like I just look leaner. I feel like I look younger. And I noticed too, my skin color is like, more glowy and like full of color in my face and my eyes were brighter like I do have a picture side by side or up and on top of each other that I'll post a lot of people are like oh the lighting's different I'm like this is taken on the same spot with the same lighting it's like yeah the, the lighting is never gonna be the same unless you have a ring light like I have right now but I feel like a lot of people have even DM me and said that I look brighter I look younger and my eyes look brighter and lighter and whiter um, and I didn't even notice that before so I have no idea so again like I said I don't know if I had breast implant illness but I don't really care because I'm happy with my small boobs I really am I feel like it fits me more I don't know if I can show you guys but like yeah I don't have a lot of boobs I do have more than I thought I would I'm gonna put some pictures of my bare breasts with little emojis on my nipples the picture with the bigger boobs over here is the picture right before my explant with my fake boobs. And then this picture is one day post-op. I think my boobs were still a little bit swollen here, so they look a little bit more fluffy. Like now they look probably a little bit more flat. I was hoping, I am still hoping that they'll fluff up a little bit because they are flat at the top and then kind of like, like this. Um, and yeah, they, you know, my skin was stretched out so much, so I'm so happy with how they turned out. I was mostly nervous that they would be completely concave and like, you know, just deformed, but not at all. Like, I was so pleasantly surprised. Like, I love how they look in bralettes. I, like, I just feel like lighter. Like, and I am lighter, obviously 10 pounds lighter, but like, you know, walking down the stairs, like my boobs would be like, boom, boom, boom. And another issue that um, my doc, my surgeon pointed out was that my breast tissue had separated from my implants. So I had what they call a waterfall effect to where my breast tissue was hanging over my implants and you could tell that it was separated. And you can tell because my nipples looked like they were pointed down. And so now that I have them out, they're, you know, they're like this more. 
but it just looks like better because it's not like a huge thing up here and then like boobs hanging, like fat tissue hanging down. So that's pretty crazy. Those are the exact reasons why I got them removed. I am so elated that I did get them removed. I think I'm just like, I just feel healthier, I'm happier, and I know that I don't have to worry about it in the future. Um, I'm excited to go through another pregnancy and breastfeeding, I'm hoping breastfeeding will be more successful this time around. And uh, my doctor was so amazing. Dr. Mohabali in Corte Madera, California, highly recommend him. It's pretty pricey, he also did a muscle repair. It came out to $7,850 which was my, my breast implant surgery was 5,500. So, <laughs> but it's a lot, it's a more difficult surgery because you have to do a, an end block total capsulectomy, which means you have to find someone that can remove the implant with the capsule still around it. The whole breast implant illness thing, I know it's very like controversial. A lot of people talk mad shit about it, but it honestly makes sense and if you don't believe in it it's like that's fine but you can't deny the fact that your body is going to fight a foreign object that's the whole reason why it forms a capsule around the implant so if you don't know once you do put in your breast implants your body immediately forms a capsule around the implant to protect your body from the foreign object that it doesn't want to be in there like you can't deny that your body is not gonna want a foreign object in there. Like, yes, are people fine with it? Totally. Some people, not affected at all. It's the same thing as if you like, have to get a pacemaker or whatever it is. Like some people are totally fine, but you can't deny that your body can reject a foreign object. Like, it's just common sense, it's science. It's, I don't know how people can't, can't believe in that. Yeah, they're not lifetime devices. So that is my story. Uh, my recovery was really great. The first night I felt amazing. The next morning it felt like I got hit by a truck and the first three to four days were pretty hard because I was still on pain meds. And honestly, I feel like the pain meds and the drain, the drains weren't that bad. I did get drains. The pain meds were worse than anything because I felt like shit, but uh, got my drains out after that. I felt amazing, felt almost back to normal by week two and so anyway to wrap this all up that's pretty much my story uh i'm gonna leave carissa puka's video below she had a whole long thing if you want to research breast implant illness and her story i'll also leave emily duncan's below robin gallant got hers removed as well and some more ladies so anyway that is my story i hope you guys uh got some insight onto why i removed my breast implants and a little bit more about that so if you guys have any questions please leave the comments below and i would be happy to answer them as best as i can and yeah thank you guys so much for watching i love you so much thank you always for the support and i'll see you guys next video bye